Hey there, and welcome back to this European Schoolnet Academy Games in Schools course. Uh, this is module four, where we're talking about what we can learn from games. And I'm super excited about this short video. And the reason that I'm excited about it is because in this video, we're going to be talking about geocaching. Um, and for me, geocaching is a really, really interesting thing when we talk about learning through play and using games and what we can learn from games, because it combines two of my favourite passions, which are the love for the outdoors and also the love for technology. Now, if you're not sure what geocaching is, it's basically the largest treasure hunt going on in the world. I've tried to explain this to people lots and lots of times over the years, but what I found best is just to show the official geocaching video from the geocaching website, and then we'll have a think about how we might use some of these applications in the classroom. So I'll play the video now. Geocaching is an any day, any time adventure that can take you to amazing and beautiful places, or even just to a place in your town that you've never been before. There are millions of geocaches worldwide. There are probably even some near you right now. Yes, you. To start finding them, just get out your phone or GPS. Go ahead, I'll wait. Then, create a free geocaching account and you're ready to go. The way it works is simple. Just choose the geocache you want to find, then navigate to its location. What you're looking for varies. Geocaches come in different sizes, shapes, and difficulties. Geocaching isn't always easy, so it's okay to get excited when you discover the cache. After finding it, sign the logbook, trade knickknacks if you want, and log your find online. When you're done, just put the geocache back where you found it, and you're on to the next one. Uh, hey, it's the other way. There's an adventure happening all the time, all around you. Become a part of it at geocaching.com. So, there you go. That's geocaching for you. The largest treasure hunt in the world. And the great thing about geocaching is it's really, really aligned to some of those characteristics of playful learning that we talked about in the first module. If you think about it, geocaching is really meaningful. And it's meaningful because quite often you're finding objects in your own local area. It's definitely active engaging because of the high problem solving element that you've got in it. And also because young people are outside, but they're also using technology, which is highly culturally irrelevant. It's pretty unlikely that you'll geocache alone Therefore, it's also socially interactive. And one of the things that I think geocaching is incredibly powerful for is actually intergenerational learning between children and adults. And sometimes it gives a context for going for a walk or taking part in physical activity. And the last thing that I will say about geocaching is it's definitely joyful. Whenever you find your first geocache, you are overwhelmed with that feeling of joy. I know this is a fact because I've run hundreds of workshops about geocaching all around the world. And every time I've taken a photograph of someone that's found their first geocache, they just cannot keep that smile off their face. And when you think about it, this is maybe a little bit strange because normally what they found is a small plastic object with some kind of geocode that's within it. Let's maybe think now about how we might use this in the classroom. Not only are there the obvious links between your local area and actually trying to find a geocache, but it might also be a useful activity to do on school trips as well. But I would like to challenge you to think about how you could take this a stage further. Because of course, these geocaches have got to come from somewhere, which means somebody has to hide them in the first place. And geocaching would be an amazing example of a great project to do with a class. Just think about it. First of all, the children would need to identify where the local geocaches were to try and find a gap for a new one. Then they would need to visit that site and think about the design of a geocache to keep it hidden. This gives lots of opportunities to talk about camouflage and of course the size of the geocache. Then you would actually have to build the cache, test it and design it. But before you leave it somewhere, you would probably need to check with the landowner. And this gives you a great opportunity for like formal writing in terms of trying to get the permission. Once you've left your cache, people will try and come and find it very quickly. There's a huge amount of kudos within the geocaching community for being the first person to find a new cache. And the interesting thing about this is of course you can then track from where in the world these people come from. Are they local people? Or have they come from a different country? And this then gives you an opportunity to talk about social subjects, history, geography, etc, etc. So 
This is what I want you to do, is if you've not heard of geocaching before, or if you've not visited it for a long time, go onto the geocaching website and put in your home postcode or your school zip code and see if you can find all of the geocaches around you. And if you really want a challenge, download the app to your mobile phone and see if you can find a geocache either next weekend or sometime in the future. So that's the end of this video. Really looking forward to next time when we're going to start to talk a little bit more about gamification. Don't forget to use the hashtag GamesCourse to bind the conversation together.